Welcome everyone to Throwback Gaming's Our Life Begins Always Let's Play Part 8. Last time we finished up the top row of moments with fireflies, which, you know, was about fireflies. And now we're going to start the DLC. So let's jump in, shall we? We're going to start off with library. Hey, that's a nice car. <laughs> Every year, the Sunset Bird Memorial Library held a held a summer reading program. Nice. Your moms and Lizzie were big fans of it. Mom and mommy because it encouraged reading and Lizzie because she could win prizes. <laughs> Sounds right. When it came to you though, you thought reading a bunch of books and then going to the library with competitive Lizzie. You loved it, you didn't care, or you hated it. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I personally love books, but the way we were talking, it sounded like we didn't. We'll just say we didn't care. <laughs> It was just something you did every year. You didn't question it much. That sounds right when you're little. You just kind of go with it. You're not really like, why? You're just kind of like, well, it's just something we do. <laughs> Lizzie didn't like when you teased her during the team quiz, but she seemed to like that you were helping her either way. <laughs> That's adorable. You and Lizzie went with Charlotte before, and this year you brought Cove too. So it's the normal squad. <laughs> His dad had been so over the moon about Cove being included that he'd driven all four of you there. Oh, this is Cove's dad's car. That's why it looks different. Dang, Cove's dad has a nice car. You had never been in Cove's dad's car before. It seemed a lot shinier than your mom's. Well, he is a single parent, so if he can afford a better car. I don't know though. It seems like he's struggling, but I don't know. After hurting the group inside, Mr. Hilton all gave you a wide smile with the arm that had a stick right on it. That is pretty cool. Have fun, kids. Stay inside of the librarian, here. I wish I could watch you in action, but your poor old dad has to finish up some work. I wonder what he does for a living. I don't know. I get like a handyman kind of vibe, maybe, but I mean... He didn't have his tools with him when he moved here, so makes you think that's not what he does unless he works for a company that provides it for him. I don't know. Though I'm sure that won't get in the way. Heck, I'd probably hold your kids back. There's pointedly no reply from his son over what was likely meant only as a joke. Cove's dad seemed to deflate a bit. I'll swing around when the when the shindig ends. Yeah, you can go home now. <laughs> He's so embarrassed. Wait till they get to her. <laughs> oh, you don't have to throw me out the door. I... Your sister already in full competition mode cut him off. For once, Cove looked grateful she was there. We have to go find a table, Mr. Holton. You can talk to Cove after when we win. Okay, okay. See you in about an hour. It's only an hour long. Then again, that's probably a long time for little kids. Have fun. Did I say that already? My advanced age is really catching up to me now. He's such a jokester. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Leave me alone. <laughs> Bye, son. He does not like his dad for some reason. And it's like, your dad's the one taking care of you, but he probably doesn't realize that when he's little. The four of you watched him shuffle out the library, glancing over his shoulder at Cove one more than once. <laughs> and there's Shiloh. He's so cute. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Hull, and thank you for bringing us. <sighs> Child is such a good kid. <laughs> Thanks, Lizzie. I don't know what you're thanking me for. Are you copying Shiloh? <laughs> Distracted, Cove was already glancing around the gigantic library. I'm gonna go explore. What? I said I'm gonna go look around and see what's in here. But the quiz starts soon. That's why we came. Why at first sight the conflict? Shiloh's eyes dart between Lizzie and Cove. <laughs> He's trying to be the peacekeeper again. Then you can do it without me, right? You don't need a bunch of people. Yeah, but I mean, the whole point was we're supposed to all do it together. You can always look afterwards. Didn't your dad say to stay with the librarians? You shouldn't go somewhere by yourself. Cove leveled an unimpressed stare at both of them. 
that his eyes met yours. He's gonna try to ask us to go with him. Why are you looking at him? Jamie is with us. Jamie can come if he wants to. Well, this is awkward. Regardless of who we pick, we're gonna make someone upset. Cove's idea is more fun. I'll stick with Lizzie. I'd rather go exploring. The quiz sounds better. Go over with Cove or stay next to Lizzie. Um, well, we can't let Cove go by himself. But Lizzie's gonna be mad at us, so we do. But let's just go over next to Cove. You walk over to Cove, averting your eyes from Lizzie. I know, it's like, take cover from the line of fire. Seriously? Cove looks surprised, but happy at the same time. You never really thought about exploring the library before. It sounded more fun than the same old thing. Well, that's true. Ugh, fine, let's go, Shiloh. Uh, okay. Her arms folded, your sister stormed off. Shiloh had to race up to keep, with her, keep up with her. Hmm, she seems to care about that a lot. Let's just tell us he is. <laughs> I don't like it. Since you've been here a lot before, we can play hide and seek. No, we're not playing hide and seek in the library. That's how someone gets hurt or gets kidnapped. Ugh, it annoys me. This is not the place to play hide and seek. You know? And... I know him and Lily, Lizzie don't get along, but... <clears throat> excuse me. You know, we did come here so that we would do this thing together, you know? Hide and seek, not exploring. Yep, if I'm searching for you and you're searching for me, we'll have a really good look at everything. You weren't entirely sure how affected that would be, but you could say he was totally wrong. I mean, he's not wrong. You get to look around to find people, but like, this isn't the place to play hide and, hide, play and, hide and seek, you know? You're not supposed to be running around in the library making a lot of noise. I'll hide first. Decision made. Decision made. Cove took off towards the back of the library. You already agreed to play with your play with him instead. So you covered your face and waited for ten seconds. This is gonna end well. I can already tell. When he looked up again, he was nowhere to be seen. He glanced over toward the way he went. Cove hadn't much time to hide, but he was already invisible. <clears throat> it's pretty impressive considering he'd never been here before. The place you decided to check was... <clears throat> next to the Peter Pan poster, beside the fairy tale display, or beside the solar system model. Um, I don't know. Let's try the solar system. Your library solar system display was pretty neat. And all the planets from the sun on out. And his own little section hidden in the science books. That's cool. But you saw a tiny pair of familiar shoes poking out from under the earth. So you leaned around it. Hey there. Hey, we got them on our first try. Good job. Oh, hey. He turned back to the Earth and its tiny moon. From this spot, I think it's supposed to be a solar eclipse. It kind of blocks out the sun. You looked at it, tilting your head. He was right. This thing was something you always walked by, but you never noticed it before then. Hide and seek did seem to be working out for finding interesting things. Your turn now. I'm going to cover my eyes and count to ten. I promise I won't peek. You better not. While Cove had his eyes securely behind in the palms of his hands, you went to go hide. Okay, we got options. By the fire awareness station, near the stuffed animals, under the giant piece of fruit, <laughs> by the outlaw poster, in the fantasy section, or near the toddler books. Um... Let's hide near the stuffed animals, why not? That might be a good cover. 
There was a place near the toddler's books with lots of stuffed animals for kids to play with. A tiny section among the box of toys and bean bags was almost out of sight if you didn't check closely. It was the perfect place to blend in, and after a little while, you did just that. Unfortunately, all those stuffed animals were also your downfall. As soon as you took a breath and leaned back, one of their press to talk sensors went off. <laughs> of course. Oh dear, I'm late. I'm late for a very important tape. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late for a... Well, does anybody know what that toy was supposed to be referencing? <laughs> for those who don't, it's the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> like a super spy detective on the trail of a diabolical supervillain. In which this case was probably you. Cove was there as soon as the white rabbit started speaking. Wow, that's loud. Oh no. Clearly entertained by your dramatic pretend faint, Cove laughed. That's silly. Thanks, I know. He laughed again. He wiggled in his spot far away from the rabbit and gestured to the rest of the library. It's my turn again. Start counting so I can pick a spot. Okay. Cove darted off before you even had a chance to fully close your eyes. One Mississippi. When the time was up, he was along gone again. There were still a lot of good places to hide, so you figured he was. And all of the old Christmas stuff, next to the kid detective poster or behind the Willy Wonka statues. Interesting. Um, Christmas stuff, kid detective poster, or Willy Wonka statues. Um, I don't know. Which one do we think he's hiding behind? You know what? I'm going to check out the detective poster just because I want to see what it says. Because I like that kind of stuff. You figured he was probably near the poster with a giant poster of the smirking kid detective. Cove could have hidden in with the t itty bitty little writing area next to it. Glancing past the poster br itself briefly, your brain registered the words, Junie B. Jones, don't call her Beatrice in big imposing letters. <laughs> I remember reading this when I was little. You paused and stared at it for a second thinking, why would I call her Beatrice if her name is Junie? Shaking your head to clear away the distraction, you tiptoe in to see who's sitting in the comfy chair. And sure enough, it was Cove. Probably regardless of which one you pick, he's there. But he was so absorbed in the book he was reading that he hadn't even noticed you yet. I don't think most people read while playing hide and seek. Cove glanced up at you in one rough motion. Oh, hey, Jamie. I wasn't sure... When you get here, it took a while. Not that long. It could have been worse, but it could have been better. Let's keep playing. I'm doing good. He put his hands over his eyes, but before you could run off again, a librarian approached the two of you. Yep, I knew it. We got in trouble. Because you don't play hide and seek in the library. Aw, kids have been looking for you. Maybe his dad's already here. Cove peeked between his fingers at the stranger. Us? You must be Cove. Your dad told me he was waiting by the entrance. Cove blinked, mouthing like he was going to say something, then glanced down at his pink cast. It was a pretty clear giveaway. Sure. Is my sister Lizzie with him? She's taller than us and has orange hair. You're Jamie, right? You nodded. Phew, I found both of you at once. That's right, she's with him. And with the little guy with freckles. <laughs> I love Shiloh. He's so cute. Come on, let's go get you reunited so we can close up for the night. Ready to go home? You and Co followed him up front for you, where the ragtag group of uh, family members and Shiloh were all waiting. I'm guessing they lost. There you, there you are. She was pouting. You could tell from across the room it was only that much more obvious as you got closer. Did you win? We came in second. Hey gang, I thought you'd been with them the whole time, Co. Glad you didn't go off by yourself, at least. Cove glanced over at you in the back of his dad. Me too. A broad smile spread over Mr. Holden's face. Even so, next time you should, Cove. Cove? Cove glanced around, slightly frantic, but Cove, just like always, had snuck off without thinking to say anything. He's leaving. 
Coach trying to be the first one into the car. With a sudden burst of speed, Lizzie darted for the exit, still in victor to be mowed, even for something like a race to ride in the front seat. There was nothing else for the three of you to do except head after that, pretending the librarians hadn't noticed all the commotion. Though Lizzie had been victorious in claiming a window seat in the car, you could tell by her crossed arms and occasional pout that she still had not forgiven your betrayal. COVID sighed when he had to sit in the middle after Lizzie shot past him at the last second, but he cheered up some as you hopped in the back seat next to him. Did you say you came in second place? That's some good going. No, it's not. She lied a little bit on the glance at you over her shoulder. Ha <laughs> sure, sure. Striving to improve is good too. I was winning in our game. Hardly. I was about to beat you. Hide and seek with just you two? That doesn't scheme and count as winning. Why not? It's not special. There's no judges or prizes. You eyed the seek that she fought so hard to win. That wasn't much of a prize either. Dad? Yes? You can see Cove's dad's eyes in the rear view mirror. Suddenly attentive at his son's call. We need a prize. Oh, uh, as a matter of fact, Mr. Holden focused intently on the road ahead as though a suitable reward to please Cove might appear before him. Right, the big thing on the flyer for this was the chance to get a free pizza coupon, wasn't it? How about I call up a takeout place and we can have pizza at home for dinner? Lizzie huffed, pulling her arms close to her chest. Great, now only Cove gets anything good. Hey there, I'll ask all your moms if it'd be alright if you kids have some. Thanks, Cove's dad. Thanks, Mr. Holden. Yeah, thanks, dad. You're welcome. I'll do what I can. But you really should have stuck with the group. The quiz would have been fun. That was the plan when I dropped you off. We stayed together and I didn't leave the library. I'm glad for that. I am. Uh, well, there's a lot of trouble you can get into even if you have a buddy along for the ride. Just be careful next time. I worry about you and I bet Jamie's parents but want him running off unexpectedly either. Okay, son? Okay. That's my boy. Now, enough guff from your old dad. Let's decide what kind of toppings we're going to get. Pepperoni! Sounds good. Anything else? And the conversation continued from there with debates on what was the best to put on a pizza for the rest of the drive. Mr. Holden wanted anchovies. Oh, that's disgusting. No. And the other three kids in the car had to band together to explain how gross they were. Exactly. The way Cove's dad laughed up in the front seat made you wonder if he was doing it on purpose. Yeah, I bet he was just trying to get a, um, a rise out of us. You had a fun day today. But closing it out with the promise of a free pizza after all and more time to hang out with Cove made it even sweeter. They were glad you decided not to do the quiz this time and were already getting curious about how things would play out next year. That was really cute. I liked it. Well, and that's it for library. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel to know when videos come out. And I'll see you next time when we do the ghost DLC. Which, shit's not interesting. I'm guessing it's going to be a campfire with some ghost stories, maybe. Or maybe we're going to explore a dark attic or basement or something. But, we'll find out next time. Until then, peace out, everyone.